blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending, bring from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest, I and my Savior am happy and blessed, washing and waiting, looking above. Filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Let me welcome you to worship here at Vermont Avenue Baptist Church. We are glad that you have joined us to worship God virtually as we lift up the name of Jesus for all that he has done for us. It is our privilege to be in God's house one more time and to give God the praise that is due him. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to praise God this day. Amen. We want to make special, special, special attention to all of the mothers who are celebrating Mother's Day today. We send to you our warmest, warmest Mother's Day greetings. Yes. And to those of you who are showering your mothers with love, be blessed today and know that you are fortunate to have your mothers still with you. And for those of us for whom mothers have transitioned to the other shore, we are grateful for the legacy of mom. We're mm -hmm. grateful for the ways in which she has instilled within us the things that give us joy. And we are grateful this day. As we go on in worship, let me say that this is the day the Lord has made. Yeah. And I have come to rejoice mm -hmm. and to be glad in it. As we gather for worship today, we encourage each and every one of you to continue to be vigilant and intentional with your care and making sure that you're practicing your social distancing, making sure that you're washing your hands, wearing your gloves, wearing your mask, and doing all of the things that not only will keep you safe, but are going to keep your brothers and sisters and family and neighbors safe as well. We're going into week six or seven of this, and I know it's quite a lot, but we are able to be faithful and stay the course that God will see us through. 
As we continue in worship, let me encourage each of you to be prayerful for those who are continuing to serve and work on our front lines, people who are making sure we're still able to get food, people who are picking up our trash, people who are working in the hospitals and nursing homes. Pray that God continues to keep and bless them, that they would have the things they need to be safe, and that ultimately they would be encouraged as they continue to fight the good fight. I want to encourage you as well to pray for the leaders of our nation, our local leaders, as well as our global leaders. All of those who are making difficult decisions during this time, they need all of our prayers. And we will remember to extend extra grace to all we encounter, because these are strange, strange, difficult times. Mm -hmm. Now to the women of Verbon Avenue, let me say to you that something is in store, something is on the way, and you want to get yourselves prepared, because something exciting is just around the corner for you, and that's all I'm going to say. You have to wait on tiptoe anticipation to see what's coming down the pike as we prepare to celebrate the women of our church. And then for those of you who have been faithful in your stewardship, by way of giving, let me thank you. Because of what you do, we are able to continue to do the work that God calls us to do, even here from Vermont Avenue. We want to pause now to give you an opportunity to go onto our website to the place where we have designated online giving. This is where. You can share your gifts, your tithes and offerings. You can give toward Nehemiah. You can give toward our social services that you might help us be in a position to continue to support our brothers and sisters. We thank you for your gifts and your giving, and we pray that you just take a moment now to go over and give your gifts and share. If you don't want to give electronically, we will accept your gifts in the mail as well. Please remember, God loves a cheerful giver and that it is more blessed to give than to receive. We thank you in advance for your generosity. Now let us continue with worship music. What a joy divine Leaning on the everlasting arms What a blessedness What a peace of mind Leaning on the everlasting arms Leaning on Jesus Leaning on Jesus Safe and secure from all our Oh, God, Lord, me. 
Lord, you are my joy. You're my salvation. Whom shall I fear? I don't have to worry. I won't be afraid. For in the time of trouble, you shall hide me. Hide me. You shall hide me. Hide me. Lord, you are my light. Lord, you are my joy. You're my salvation. Whom shall I fear? I don't have to worry. I won't be afraid. For in the time of trouble, you shall hide me. Hide me. You shall hide me. Hide me. He shall hide me in his tabernacle. He shall fed me upon a rock of stone. He shall hide me in his tabernacle. He shall fed me upon a rock of stone. Lord, you are my light. Lord, you are my joy. You're my salvation. Whom shall I fear? I don't have to worry. I won't be afraid. For in the time of trouble, you shall hide me. Hide me. You shall hide me. Hide me. He shall hide me in the tabernacle. He shall set. He shall hide me in the tabernacle. He shall set me upon a rock of stone. declarative statement saying praises unto you bless the name of the Lord as brother Stringfield comes to give us the scripture for the morning and the prayer let me say to each and every one of you that today we will be celebrating the Lord's Supper so prepare your communion elements get those things that you need on standby get them ready so that we can share at the end of this worship in the Lord's Supper Good morning. Today's scripture taken from Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. 
Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we rejoiced. Restore our fortunes, Lord, like the water courses in the Negev. May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seeds for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. Let us bow our heads for prayer. Most holy and almighty God, we come to you with the spirit of thanksgiving. Somebody asked the question, what if you had today only what you thank God for yesterday? Where would we be? Lord, we thank you for everything, the good and the bad, the ups, the downs, the wins, and even the losses. Good times are sweet, but we know that tough times lead to blessings you have in store for us. If we stay in your word, if we stay in your love, we will rise up. Stop by the sick beds today, God. Let them know there is healing in your name. Today, as we celebrate mothers, our, first, our household first responders, we know being a mother is a forever job that often comes with little thanks. But there's a certain comfort, a certain understanding, and a certain love that mothers give. Thank you, God, for our mothers. Hold them up. Hold them up. Give them your special anointing right now. These blessings we ask in your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
a great place to just bless the name of the Lord, to just thank him for who he is, to thank him for what he's done, and to in your own way say hallelujah to the name of the Lord. It's a great day to be able to say hallelujah. It's a great mind that knows that he's worthy of all of our praise. And so we gather this day that if nobody else wants to do it, we have come to say hallelujah. To the name of the Lord. Would you bow your heads with me? Gracious Lord of heaven, how we thank you for giving us the victory, for helping us to be more than conquerors. I pray now that you use my mind, my heart, my voice to do your will in this place. No longer what I would, but only what you want done in this place. Would you bless these, your people? We thank you for those who have journeyed out this day to lead us in song and scripture and prayer and to help us as we worship and bless your name. Help us, Lord, to see Jesus this day. In the matchless name of Jesus the Christ, all God's people said, Amen. As we turn our attention to this morning sermonic focus, I want to invite you to open your Bibles to Psalm number 30. Psalm number 30 is where I would invite your attention. As you open the Word of God, please remember that God has something to say to you today, something that will encourage your hearts and something that will give you strength for your journey. Psalm 30, and we're going to go down to the latter part of that psalm. Verse number 11 is where we'll begin our reading and go through to the end of the psalm. Psalm 30, verse number 11. Hear now the word of the Lord. You have turned for me my mourning into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness. To the end that my glory may sing praise to you and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give thanks to you forever. This is the word of God, and we say thanks be to God. You may be seated in the Lord's presence, and if you're home, you can reclaim your seats as well. For our time together this morning, I want to preach from the subject dance rehearsal. Dance rehearsal. And I solicit all of your prayers. Psalm 30 is an interesting psalm because in it, we see these couplets that the psalmist shares. These moments where we 
see the ups and the downs of life. We see the pits and the pitfalls as well as the moments of great exclamation and joy. It reminds us that life for us can be that way. That there are a variety of moments that we find ourselves in. Sometimes we find ourselves laughing. Sometimes we find ourselves crying. Some days seem to be good days when things are going our way, when things stay on schedule and according to plan. Other days are bad days when even the small things seem to be out of kilter. But it also calls to our attention, this psalm does, the unpredictability of life and our responsibility to be prepared to face both the ups and the downs. Paul tries to live this sentiment when he speaks to the Philippian church in chapter number four. He says, I am not saying this because I am in need. For I have learned to be content whatever circumstance. I know what it is to be in need. And I know what it is to have plenty. I have been hungry. I have learned the secret of being content in every situation, whether I have food or I'm hungry, whether I'm living in plenty or in want. Then he says these words I can do. All things through Christ who gives me strength. Paul is trying to echo the words of the psalmist that though sometimes you're up and sometimes you're down, the believer would do well to manage both of those circumstances with care. Mothers know what this means. Mothers probably remember the day that child was born. And you were confronted with this psalmist reality in that you could say that you remember the pain and the wailing and the sorrow and the hurt that childbearing meant for you. But somehow in a moment, it transitioned into joy. Somehow in a moment in the birth of your child, you found that you were celebrating instead of just crying. You found that there was a moment when you felt lighter than air. But life's roller coaster, even as a mother, goes beyond just the birth of your child. There is the downturn of those terrible twos when you've got to work through the rambunctious nature of children. But thank God for the joy that comes on the other side of the terrible twos. Oh, but then there are those teenage years where they tend to develop more independence and try to find their way in responsibility and maturity. But thank God there's dancing on the other side of those teenage years when they transition into adulthood. All of us can point to moments in our lives when we have either heard or sensed the music for us stop and the need for celebration seem to wane away when the uninvited circumstance shows up, when the unwelcome misfortune of life knocks on our door. For most of us, we do the best we can just to cope and make it through. In moments like this, I have gladly turned to my faith. And I have remembered some of those scriptures from my childhood, those pillars of the faith that hold me together. I've remembered times and spent time in fervent prayer. But I've also been able to turn to faithful friends and family who know the Lord, who are able to give me words of encouragement to lift me up when my head has been bowed down. What do you do? What do you do when life sours on you? When the good times cease to roll? 
What do you do when the soundtrack of your life turns to the blues? Is it your testimony that you have found your faith to be a great source of strength? Is it your testimony that sometimes instead of starting with your faith, you retreat more quickly to your friends and your family and then revert back to your God? Have you found in times of trouble that God is still an ever-present help? We are all in the space where we have found ourselves overtaken by the circumstances of life that have gone beyond our control. This small coronavirus has brought the world to its knees. We've watched as this silent pandemic has altered our economy, causing the jobless rate to soar past 14 percent. We have watched as it rocked our health care system, pushing our hospitals and our health care workers to the brink. And it feels as though the psalmist would describe this as the perfect time for wailing. This is a good space for us to cry and be sorrowful. This is a good space for us to be worried and to be filled with a kind of sadness. But I want to suggest today, child of God, that yes, this coronavirus gives us reason to be wailing and to be sad with all of the loss, whether it's of jobs or of life, all of the loss of normalcy and of the similitudes of life that we have come to know with all that is changing beneath our feet there's time it seems for wailing but i want to suggest that being black in america is enough to make you cry even before coronavirus beyond what the virus is doing it is circumstances like the one that happened on Sunday, February 23rd. 25-year-old black young man, Ahmaud Aubrey, was enjoying a Sunday afternoon job. He was running through Brunswick, Georgia, when two white men decided he looked suspicious and decided they had the authority to stop him and to hold him at gunpoint. They took his life that day. But if that wasn't bad enough that this father and son took the justice system into their own hands, if that wasn't bad enough, the record is that that day they saw enough evidence, the authorities did, to bring charges and to make arrests. But because the district attorney was friends with the man who shot the young man, and because they shared a skin color, there were no arrests made. After killing this 25-year-old young man who would have been 26 this past Friday, that father and son went home and watched TV, enjoyed their life, enjoyed their living. And it wasn't until two months later that an investigation was launched. It wasn't until more than two months later that an arrest was made. What I'm trying to say is life knows how to give you moments where wailing is in order, where crying makes sense, particularly if you are raising young black boys who no matter what they do cannot help but be seen as a threat by people who are supposed to even at times be protecting them. Yeah. Oh, the sad truth is it's not new. You should wail because black men are gunned down and harassed and mistreated every day in this country. And in some instances, it's at the hands of the people who were sworn to protect and serve. And far too often, their perpetrators are not held to account. There is no justice on the other side. I'm telling you, there's a time for wailing and mourning in this country. The psalm is here in this latter place. Talks about the time of mourning 
talks about the sackcloth that you put in and he points to the customary expressions of the day when sadness came if you lost a loved one. You would then put on sackcloth, take off your good clothes. Put on sackcloth, put on ashes all over yourself to show the world that you were hurting, to show the world that you were mourning. And for a period of time, you could wail and you could even pay people to come and mourn with you and for you to help express the magnitude of your sadness. What I'm saying to you, child of God, is that the psalmist is trying to touch in on the tender places in life when life is not going the way we wanted it to. It's a word for those of us who have grown in frustration. We're tired of wearing masks when we go out the house. Tired of having to put on gloves. Tired of hearing politicians say one thing today and something different tomorrow. Tired of hearing the word coronavirus or COVID-19. Frustrations are raising high. And I imagine that in your frustration you would say, Preacher, today I don't feel much like dancing. This is not a time for dancing. It's a bad sermon for you to preach on Mother's Day in the middle of a pandemic. Why are you preaching about dancing? But a people of faith, we've got to prepare to dance. I mean, we must get ready for the music to begin to shift in our lives. We've got to start now getting ready for the seemingly perpetual dark clouds to be lifted. And we can't wait until the end comes. We've got to get ready to dance right now. What I'm saying is coronavirus won't last always. What I'm saying is you've got to start now getting yourself ready for what you want to be on the other side. Let me pause here, child of God, to say that I have heard people say, I can't wait till we get back to normal. I can't wait till we can get back to our routine. Let me caution you, child of God. There may not be normal as we've known it on the other side of this. I don't know what will forever be changed. I don't know how we will emerge from this, but I do know I'm prepared to go with Jesus. I do know that in this time of pandemic, it's a great moment for us to start to get ready for the other side. I don't know when things are going to open back up. I don't know when you're going to be able to go back to work and back to school. I don't know when those things will happen, but I tell you there's a day coming when they're going to release us back to work. There's a day coming when they're going to release us back to our previously scheduled programming. And when they do, the question is, who will you be? Who will you be on the other side? Let me tell you that who you are on the other side of this pandemic will be a direct reflection of who you were in the middle of it. This is what I mean. If you sit around the house eating donuts and brownies all day, every day, on the other side of the pandemic, we'll see it in your waistline. I'm saying if you spend your time wasting and sleeping away the day, we will notice on the other side when your mind is not as sharp as it should be. Oh, but child of God, I'm talking to somebody now who senses in their spirit that God is going to get us through this, who senses in their spirit that there will be a time of dancing and you're getting ready right now. You're praying more than you ever did. You're reading the Bible more consistently than you ever have done. And you will be blessed on the other side of this. In life sometimes, you've got to prepare before the music starts. You have to get your stretch on. You've got to go over your steps in your mind. And that is what Jesus is calling us to do today. Start getting ready to dance. 
write that book, finish that business plan, prepare that wedding, research those investments, fund that college education, start that diet, apply for that program, complete that application, begin that new workout regimen. Whoever you intend to be, start today becoming that person. Get your dancing shoes ready. Dust off your cobwebs. Get your hips loose and get ready to start dancing. Why is the preacher talking to us today about dancing? Don't you see what the psalmist says? He's highlighting for us our dance partner's role in this. You see, the psalmist says we are not alone. He says we have a dancing partner and God is the one who's responsible for making sure the music shifts from what it was when you were wailing to what it will be when you're dancing. God is the one who's responsible for getting you out of sackcloth. God is the one who's responsible for shaking the ashes off of you and helping you come alive to new realities in Jesus Christ. God is the one who knows how to bring triumph out of tragedy. God is the one who knows how to change the soundtrack of our lives. I can't explain how he does it. Oh, friends, but if you trust him, if you believe in him, you can start getting ready today. You, you can start getting your dancing shoes ready. You can start getting together. I know your heart might be heavy. I know your eyes may still have tears in them, but get ready to dance. I know you might be sad or frustrated or worried, but get ready to dance because God is waiting on you. God is ready to grab your hand. God is ready for the world to see you dance. Oh, and it is in the dancing of life the dancing with God that I'm reminded I'm not all I ought to be but in God's hands I'm better than what I was I don't have all that I wish I had but in God's hands I have more than enough God has me ready to dance and I don't know about you but I'm getting my mind ready. I don't know about you, but I'm getting my heart ready. I don't know about you, but I'm getting away from folks who keep telling me to sit down. I'm getting ready to dance. I'm getting ready to shout. I'm getting ready to give God glory with all that I have. I'm just saying, if I were you, I'd start getting ready to dance. God, we thank you for these trying times that remind us that our faith is dependable. Uh, these are the times when we are sure that you've promised never to leave and never to forsake us. We thank you that our faith is not so small that it only works on sunny days and when things are going right with us. But we're grateful that you've given us a robust faith that works in the mountaintops and in the valleys. Now, Lord Jesus, somebody may be tuning in. Someone may have heard this clarion call to dancing and know in their hearts, that though their heads have been down and their hearts have been heavy, that up above their heads, they still hear music in the air. Something has made them feel light. Something makes them want to keep on keeping on. They don't know what it is. They can't explain it because they've never confessed Christ as their Savior. But today's a great day for them to give their hearts to Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the dance steps you give us in this life. We're grateful now to know that you're a great dance partner. If we follow your lead, there is nothing that we cannot accomplish. Now be with us, Lord Jesus, 
and guide those who don't know you as their Savior into your sweet embrace. In Jesus' name I pray. God's people said, Amen. Now I'm talking to someone who was tuning in. And you don't know how you stumbled on this worship experience. You didn't intend to. You didn't intend to pay attention this long. But you've been listening and you've been listening and something wouldn't let you turn away. I'm here to tell you God has been speaking to you. And God is interested in who you are and who you are becoming. God wants to see you become your best self in Jesus Christ. And you can't do it without God. No matter how much money, no matter how well connected, you cannot experience the true success of life the abundant life that turns into life eternal without God. Today's a great day for you to decide to give God your heart. All you've got to do is send your name and your phone number via email to vabcconnect at gmail.com and someone will reach out to you today and encourage your heart, someone will reach out to you today and make sure you know how to connect with Jesus Christ. The second invitation is for those who are tuning in, who have everything that gives them the creature comforts in life but do not have a church home. Friends, you need a church home, a place where you can grow and be nourished in your faith, a place where you can utilize your gifts and skills. We would love to be your church here at Vermont Avenue. And I would love to be your pastor. The third invitation is for those who say, Preacher, I know in my heart that Jesus used to mean the world to me. And I set my life up that way. I let him be the number one priority. But I got busy. I got important. I got bogged down in the things of the world. And I watched Jesus fall down my list of priorities. Well, friends, today is a great day, a great day for you to reprioritize your life and put Jesus in the number one spot again. It's a great day for you to decide to live for him, to respond to any of those invitations. All you have to do is send your name and phone number to vabcconnect at gmail.com and we will gladly connect you with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now let me thank those of you who have courageously prepared that email and hit send. Let me tell those of you who are hesitant and still on the fence. Let me remind you that tomorrow is not promised. The young man in the sermon today, he left home and was sure he was going to make it back. But that was not the case for him. While you can, while you have this chance, won't you connect with the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. Now, friends, as we prepare our hearts for giving, some of you gave at the top of our service. Some of you have given during the week. If that's you, if that's the case, I'm not speaking to you. But I'm talking to those of you who've been putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. I want you to know that stewardship is still important to God. And then making sure you give into God's cause is an act of obedience and love. We pray that you go to our online giving and make your gifts available. Share what you have prepared in your heart to give. We know you're going to give your best because God has always given you his best. We pray that as you give, you give with a spirit of generosity, knowing there are many needs that need to be met. And we're excited to be positioned by your gifts to continue to meet the needs of our community. Please take some moments to give and listen to the giving music as we prepare for the celebration of the Lord's Supper. Get your communion elements ready as we prepare to receive the Lord's Supper. <laughs> Everywhere you go, there is strife. There is strife. Everywhere you go, there is something that worries you. But remember, I 
me to cry. No need to fear. He's everywhere. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Our God is standing by. No need to cry. No need to fear. He's everywhere. to fear.
friends, that should be all of our testimony, that he has done great things for us. Uh, when we say great things, sometimes we think it has to be big things. But great things are just important things, significant things, and God knows how to do great things. One of the greatest things that God has done for us is he gave his son, Jesus Christ, to die in our place. And Jesus, as he was preparing to die, to be our sacrifice, he said, I want you to remember me in a particular way. We have come to the moment where we get a chance to celebrate the communion of the Lord's Supper where we get to share in remembering Jesus Christ now, as your home let me tell you this is the moment where you need to make sure you have whatever you're going to use for bread to represent his body it may be crackers it may be sandwich bread whatever you have that will be fine and then whatever you're going to use to represent a shed blood whatever kind of juice you have in your house Get it prepared as we get ready to begin our remembrance of the Lord Jesus Christ. Reverend Michael Miller is going to lead us in our church covenant. Have we been led as we believe by the Holy Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and on the profession of his, our faith having been baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. As we do now in the presence of God, the angels in this assembly most solemnly and joyfully enter into a covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort, to promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship, ordinance, discipline, and doctrines, to contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, to, to the expenses of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel through all nations. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotions, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances, to walk circumspectly by, in the world, to be just in our dealing faithfully in our engagement and exemplary in our deportment, to avoid all tattling, backbiting, and excessive anger, to abstain from the use of intoxicating drink as a beverage, and to be zealous in our efforts to advance the kingdom of our Savior. We further engage to watch over one another in brotherly love, to remember each other in prayer, to aid each other in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy in feeding and courtesy in speech, to be slow to anger and take offense, but always ready for reconciliation, mindful of the rules of our Savior to secure it without delay. We moreover engage that when we remove from this place, we will as soon as possible unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. And now unto him who brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, be power and glory forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Miller. Let us prepare for our prayer of consecration. Bow your heads with me. Gracious Lord Jesus, we need your help. We beg your forgiveness that you cleanse us from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet, and that you make us appreciative of your presence in our lives. Help us to get beyond ourselves and to focus for these moments on you and what you represent and who you are. We thank you now for your sacrifice of love, that you certainly died in our place even while we were yet sinners. We owe you a debt of gratitude that we should spend the rest of our life trying to repay. My prayer now is that you touch these communion elements and go into the homes of the people who are tuning in now. And whatever they have to represent your body and your blood, would you touch it and allow it to be representative 
of your broken body and representative of your shed blood. We thank you now for families that are gathered together in their homes, mothers and sons and fathers and daughters who will be able to share in your communion feast together. We thank you for the technology that makes it possible and we pray that you never let us lose sight of the meaning of this moment. Consecrate us now, Lord Jesus. In your name I pray. All God's people said, Amen. As you prepare your hearts to receive the Lord's communion, uh, let me say that it is a joy for us to be able to still celebrate it. We thank God for whatever we have in our homes that makes the celebration of this Lord's Supper possible. The Bible tells us that when Jesus, that night in which he was going to be betrayed, was with his disciples, he decided he wanted them to remember him. And he did it in this simple way. He wanted all of us to be able to have access to it. So he took something common and inexpensive like bread. And he said, I'm going to allow this to represent my own broken body, that I am here for everyone to be able to access. And so I'm asking that you get whatever you're using to represent his broken body, whatever kind of bread or crackers, get that in your hands right now. I'm going to give you a moment to get it together and make sure everyone has what they need. As you hold it in your hands, let me remind you that this now represents the broken body of our Lord Jesus, broken because you and I were sinners and he wanted to show his love and save us. That night, the Bible says he took the bread, he broke it, he blessed it, and he gave it to them, and he said, take and eat ye all of it. Let's eat together now. As you prepare to get your representations of the shedded blood of our Lord Savior, Whatever you're using, whatever kind of juice it is, get it. Make sure everybody has what they need. As you're getting it together, let me say that what Jesus did in the shedding of his blood was he was helping fulfill the scripture that suggests that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission or forgiveness of sins. In other words, if he didn't shed his blood for you, you would still be seated beneath the penalty of sin. And so to make sure that you were going to be clear of those penalties, Jesus said, I'm going to shed my blood. So that night after he had taken the bread, while he was sitting with his disciples, he took the cup, the fruit of the vine, the Bible says. He blessed the cup. He passed it around to them. And he said, I'm going to shed my blood for you. He was talking to you. I'm asking now that you take the cup and you drink all of it. Lord Jesus, we are absolutely sure that we don't deserve your great kindness. We don't deserve your tremendous sacrifice. All that you have done for us, we don't deserve it. But I pray, Lord Jesus, that it never gets lost on us, that we never forget how much you love us, how much you care. Even when we're wrong and make mistakes, you keep on believing in us. You keep on giving us another chance. I thank you now for what you've done for me, how you've saved me, how you've loved me, how you've cared for me. I pray as we close out this moment of communion that we live lives that remember the Lord Jesus. That everyone we encounter virtually over the phone will know that we know the Lord Jesus and that our hearts actually do belong to him. Thank you for what you gave. Thank you for what you did for us on Calvary. 
in the matchless name of Jesus the Christ, all God's people said, Amen. Friends, I want to thank you for sharing that beautiful moment with us here at Vermont Avenue. We pray that your hearts have been encouraged and you've been strengthened for your journey. We want to encourage you to remember as you celebrate your moms to be grateful to have moms with you, to be mindful that not everyone has that privilege, and to send up a prayer for those you know who have lost their mothers on this side. We're looking forward to another wonderful week. We have our prayer call on Tuesday. We have our Bible study on Wednesday. We would love for you to connect to those things. Now as we prepare to receive the final blessing, we go knowing that the Lord is getting our dancing music ready and we get our hearts ready even in our troubles and trials to dance with God. Receive now the final blessing as we prepare to leave this place. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his own presence with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God our Savior be glory, majesty, dominion, and power. Now, today, and forevermore, may we all sing together. Mm -hmm.